We often don't realise the value of a syslog server until it's too late. So whether something's happened, something's been compromised, or you need to go back and look through some of your logs, it's always too late. But don't worry, in this video I'm going to show you a few simple steps on how to get an Arsys log server set up on a Raspberry Pi. Now there are multiple other products out there that you can use, you can even spin up a virtual machine to do this for you, it's entirely up to you. But in this one I'll show you it via a Raspberry Pi. Now for you new viewers out there, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more weekly videos and for you that are returning, your support is always appreciated. Anyway, let's jump straight in. We will start by imaging our SD card, so I'm actually not going to bother installing the full operating system, I'm just going to choose um, the base shell, choose my SD card and then click right. Um, just click yes to this and so it will raise everything. So we're going to let that go off and go ahead and install, just need to pop in my passwords. So we're going to go off and let that install. Once that's done we'll plug that into the Raspberry Pi and let that get booted up. Okay, so that is now complete. So we're gonna go and plug this into the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. So let's go ahead now and have a look in our UDM Pro. Let's have a look at what IP address the Raspberry Pi has picked up. So we're just gonna load up the network. Okay, we just go to clients and if we have a quick look somewhere down here, we will have it. We just saw it in an IP address order. There we go, Raspberry Pi, so 10.1.1.187. Okay, that's fine. So what we're gonna do now, we can close this. So we go SSH Pi at 10.1.1.187. Should allow us to log in. So if you ever come up with this error, it's SSH hyphen keygen. Okay, yep, SSH hyphen keygen um, dash capital R and then 10.1.1.1.8.7. That will then remove that and then you should be able to SSH in. So what it has is it has the fingerprint of the old Raspberry Pi one before I re-imaged it, so I've just re-imaged it now. Um, so yeah, we just want to allow that. So then it's going to ask for a password. And there we go, now we're in. So just before we get started, let's go to Raspy config. What we just want to do here is just set the locale settings. So if we go WLAN country, Great Britain, okay. And then it will probably ask for a reboot. So let's give that a quick reboot. Um, and then we're going to start going and configuring um, the Raspberry Pi to become a syslog server. Okay, so that should have rebooted. So if we try and log back in again, there we go. We've just run an apt update, so now we would just go ahead and run sudo apt full hyphen upgrade. Um, and then what that will do is everything that's just gone and downloaded, it's gonna make them, uh, it's gonna go off and upgrade. So what we wanna do here is press yes, and then we're gonna let that go off and complete. So now that's complete, it's just one quick line, which is sudo apt install, and then we'll type in r syslog. Hit enter and that then goes off and installs it okay according to this it's already installed so great fantastic so we don't need to worry about installing that so before we even do anything we need to get the syslog to listen to any requests coming across to it so we need to go to the um, config file so we type in sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash r syslog dot conf so you can see down here that we have two main areas. So we have up here, we have UDP and we have TCP. So we're gonna allow both of them for now. Uh, so let's go ahead and add this and add this, remove this. So what that's done is basically saying, hey, I wanna listen on TCP and UDP port 514. So control X and then Y and then enter, that takes you out of that. So now that we have the Raspberry Pi listening on port 514, we need to create a configuration file. So what we're going to do with the configuration file is quite simple. It's uh, sudo, it's sudo nano, and then forward slash etc, forward slash rsyslog.d, and then we can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to be using this for my unified devices. So I'm going to do unify.conf. Uh, okay, 
Then that opens up again, an empty text, text shell. Now I'm actually gonna paste this in because I don't think you wanna watch me type this up, but I will leave it in the description below, so check that out. Um, but I'll run you through it anyway. We're basically saying this is the template um, and we're saying unify is the name and then we're saying this is where we're going to store it and then it's saying if we want uh, if from where that host IP is so where the UDM uh, where the syslog logs are going to be coming from that's the IP address so you want to give the IP of the server of where it's coming from that is my UDM pro so that's going to be sending it and then you want to type in the name of the template. And then from there, control X, Y, and enter. So once we've done that, we want to restart the syslog, uh, the R syslog within the Raspberry Pi. So for that, it's just sudo sysystemctl restart and then R syslog. That will go off and restart that service. So that was all you really need to get this started on the Raspberry Pi. So literally two or three simple steps. So what I'm gonna quickly do now is go to my settings within my UDM Pro, um, system settings, uh, controller configuration, remote logging, and I'm just gonna quickly show you through some of these here. Just before I continue, I'll make my text a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to read. So these are our remote logging, so you can see there are different levels of logging you can use for your devices, for the management system and remote access. Um, within each one you have normal, verbose, debug, depending on what you are doing and what you wanna resolve. Um, I do not recommend turning verbose or debug on all of them because you may find your um, syslog server getting flooded. I mean, you'll see in a couple of minutes it already is quite busy, um, but yeah, you don't wanna overflow it. So we want to enable syslog um, and then we want to type in the IP address which is 10.1.187 and then it is using port 514. So we go ahead and click apply. So now that's going to go off and send the syslog, uh, syslog messages to the syslog server. Now we've restarted, we need to type in sudo tail-f and then we want to go to the location of the log, so var log uh, unify.log. Now, there you go, you can see now this is showing real time of what's going on within uh, the Unify system. So this is pretty much the, if you want to see a live version of what's going on, that's the command you use. Now, there are there are some other ways you can actually look at the logs. So, so I use a application called Cyberduck, um, and what this does is it allows you to go into um, the Raspberry Pi, so it's sort of like WinSCP for Windows, um, and you can see the unify.log here, so I can pull this out, um, allow it, and then it will say where do you want to, s then it will download it. So then I have my log file here, so I can actually preview it and go through and basically see what's going on. So there's a couple of ways where you can get your logs. So what I would advise you to do is keep this running in the background. Always remember you don't need to set everything for verbose, otherwise you'll be there, or debug, otherwise you'll be there for months and months trawling through logs. But it's always best to have something like this set up. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, drop me a comment in the section below. Also, be sure to hit the like button. And if you didn't, well, maybe hit the dislike button twice. All the links to the products are in the description below, so feel free to check them out. Until next time, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.